Falcons, you know, falcons, like a bird of prey, like eagles, hmm, can be trained. Okay. So one day, as a gift, this king received two falcons. And he gave them to his falcon trainer to train them. Months later, this trainer informed the king that one falcon was flying majestically. He was responding to the training. Why? The other had not moved from his branch where he was kept. So one falcon listened to the trainer and was obeying, was flying majestically. He was very happy. And the other falcon, he just, he just stayed where he was kept. He refused to move from the branch that he was perched on. Then the king summoned all his ministers, all his people of wisdom, knowledge, even the magicians, to make this falcon move from his branch. But none could get that bird move a bit, a bit an inch from his place of rest. He was always seated on that branch. Then, the king promised a great reward to the one who could make the falcon fly. Several people tried. Because there was a huge prize attached to that. Several people tried and failed. Except one farmer. One farmer, he came and made the falcon fly. One farmer, you know... A farmer in the village, eh? not very much known for great things, but of all the people who came and tried and fa failed, this farmer alone succeeded. And the king was thrilled. He asked the farmer what he had done to make this, this falcon move and fly away, fly eh? from the branch. The farmer simply said, your majesty, I just cut the branch on which the bird was sitting. I just cut the branch on which the bird was sitting. And understood the bird had no other option than to fly. 
I hope you understood the, the story, no? Today, if we want to find our place, if we want to be all what God has created and planned for us to be, we just need to leave our comfort zones. We have to leave that branch on which, on which we are seated for long, on which we feel comfortable, even when other things go wrong. Because that is our comfort zone. Today's readings emphasize this truth. In the first reading, God tells Abraham, who later becomes Abraham, to leave his country, his family, his father's house, and all that he possesses. God just told him, Abraham, get out, leave, and come to the land that I will show you. Did he mention the land? Did God give him the address of the new land? Just imagine. What an order. What a command. And yet, this man had, this man left his branch. Abraham experiences many difficulties and sufferings because he left that branch. But, in the end, the result was his life of blessing and glory. You ask, you ask the richest man sometime on earth how he came to have so much riches. He will always start with a sad story of his, of his beginning. I know someone uh, when I was a kid we used to always look at a beautiful a uh, beautiful car, very long, and we used to call it aeroplane. <laughs> As a small kid. It was belonged to a certain Mr. Thomas, Catholic, and he was the richest person in, in, our, in our place, in our village. And you know how, how he started his life. He used to put himself on the, uh, on the way to a, a mound, of a, a, a hill, where there was a beautiful church. And then that was a, silly, a, a center of pilgrimage. Mm. So many people would be walking up to that house, that church. And this small boy with his mother were there selling rosaries and objects of piety. This small little Thomas as a kid. But God was with him. He slowly grew. He grew gradually. He became big because of his prayer, because of his hard work. And the rest was history. He became the richest person in, the, in our village. He had many, many, many beautiful houses, many factories. And, and even today, there's a big, huge road named after him. He was also very, very generous very generous towards the parish, towards Don Bosco nearby. So, he had a very humble beginning. Something like our, our Abraham. Abraham had some things, of course. Eh? He was not so poor. Abraham was rich. He had his father. Everything was there. Still, he said yes to God's command to him to leave the known, to leave the familiar and come away to the land that he would show him in due time. Beginning of a work is always tough, always difficult. All the houses that we have, Salishan houses anywhere in the world, eh, beginning would have been very, very, very tough. Our first missionaries, our first fathers who stayed in the house, is enough to ask them, they will tell you, no, no, Dominic, it was not easy. It was not easy. Eh, we sweated. It was difficult. But now, everything, oh, eh, things become better, no? In the verse preceding today's gospel, 
Jesus predicts his passion, death and resurrection. In fact, we have we have uh, the, the St. Peter, Peter's reaction to Jesus. No, Lord, no. Let these sad things not come to you. And Jesus calls him, get off from me, Satan. You speak like a man. You don't speak. You are not inspired by God. Jesus spoke about his passion, death and resurrection. Today's passage, which we have just heard, today's passage of the transfiguration ends with Jesus' command to his disciples. Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Why? Matthew thus indicates that there is necessary connection between suffering and glory. Between death and death and life. No glory without suffering. No life without death. Or, if there is life, there will be also death. If there is death, there is all with So all, all connected in a, in a person's life. We can never be glorious without having suffered. Gain nothing, uh, no, uh, no pain, no, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. It's a, it's a truth. It's a, it's a universal truth. But there are people who try to gain without, without losing. They, all, they, they want to gain all the way. Come what may. We have, in such a person, we have instances of injustice, heartlessness, the means that they employ to achieve the gains are often dangerous to the society. And such persons cause the downfall of the society. If a society is bad, poor, these persons are responsible because they grab everything without, without sacrifice. They want fast glory. In fact, we live uh, it will. We live in a world of fast things, fast food, hmm? you know, there are, there are mothers in, the, in some families who never prepare food, because maybe they may not know, these modern, modern mothers, some modern mothers do not know how to cook, so they always, always buy, nowadays with this online, online shopping, it is more, more easy, you know, fast food, I speak of fast food, then there is fast money. People playing, eh, I don't know, yeah, you play these online games. Eh? When they get, they get. When they lose, they lose. And there are a lot of suicides because of all that. So, this is the age of fast food, fast money, fast fame. Fast fame. One, one, eh, people want you to be famous. So, they, these people also resort to all kinds of inhuman methods. Inhuman methods. To achieve their goal. But for a Christian, no. For a Christian, he knows that there is a necessary connection, relation almost between suffering and death, life and death and life. If there was no Good Friday, could we ever speak of an Easter Sunday? No Easter Sunday without Good Friday. And we know what Good Friday stands for. Death. Death of Jesus. But we know the joy, the triumph of Easter Sunday. The resurrection of the Lord. Matthew skillfully drives home this point. The three disciples who are at the transfiguration, as we hear them today, will be also there with Jesus in the garden of Garden of Gethsemane to witness his agony, his anxiety, his crying out in pain to his father. Father, 
if possible take away this cup of suffering from me but not my will but your will be done so these three disciples who witnessed jesus in all his glory as we heard them today in the in the in the in this passage of transfiguration they are there with jesus to suffer with him my dear friends it is not easy to leave our comfort zones you know i remember there was a father uh, who was very long time in a house in a eh, so uh, many people eh, told the provincial you father is better that this per- this person gets a change for him and for for others so provincial comes and tells proposes to this father father why not to change eh? maybe good for you know my god you know how eh? uh, he reacted very 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 <laughs> wildly and uh, no, is we didn't see he was angry he was angry with the proposal and the provincial also left that left him and as soon as the provincial left in a few days after the provincial left you know what this father did he made a coffin he made a coffin he got a coffin made and he lay in that coffin had a photo taken of him lying in the coffin are you with me <laughs> he had a photo taken of him in the coffin lying in the coffin and he sent that photo to the to the provincial saying if you change me this will be my this will be my state i will die imagine someone who did not want to leave his comfort zone comfort maybe he was working hard yes but a command is a command as to abraham hmm? leave your comfort zone god has always better plans for us and when we are demanded when we are asked to leave our comfort zones naturally evidently human is human that we resist that we resist to leave our comfort zone our natural impulse is to stay stay on in a comfort zone on the mountain surrounded by magnificence and glory peter wants to remain the short time he found comfort zone there around jesus jesus shrouded in glory covered in all splendor peter thought yeah this is the place built for me and this is the this is the place for the rest of my life let me let me stay on and in fact he tells jesus lord it is it is good to be here lord it is good to be here i will make three tents one for you one for moses one for elijah he forgot about himself maybe in that excitement you know we maybe i'll make three tents lord let us continue being here because it is nice it's comfortable but the voice from heaven tells them to listen to jesus teaching that the way to the fullness of life is through suffering and death peter was peter was enlightened as about about the mission of christ his mission was not to bask on in the glory of the resurrection rather come down the mountain and face what was ahead of him the passion death and of course the resurrection this was not easy for jesus even for jesus it was not easy it is not easy also for us my dear friends the transfiguration assured jesus that the father was with him and strengthened him on his road through suffering death to the resurrection so what was the what was the need or what was the why of the transfiguration it was to assure jesus that father was with him 
it was to assure jesus that father was with him that it was his father's will that he should do glorious do son of god he should take the path of suffering he should undergo the passion he should be killed and then of course to rise in glory on the resurrection day it strengthened the transfiguration strengthened the disciples faith on their journey of discipleship they knew that jesus was glorious glory of the father was with him and yet they knew that he had to undergo the path of suffering and also they with him the it strengthened the disciples faith on their journey of discipleship god's love will sustain us as we leave our comfort zones and journey through suffering to life this is the lesson for us today god's love will sustain us throughout our journey on earth whether filled with gladness filled with or will filled with sorrow god is there and we have to walk this path there is no other path except the path of suffering to attain the glory that god has kept for us my dear brothers and sisters let us place our lives into his life and experience him in our daily life by looking up to god in prayer by giving up to god in fasting from sin by taking up from god love for our brothers and sisters in arms giving which are the three pillars of this beautiful season of lent that we find ourselves in today let us look up to god in prayer let's pray 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 much and let us give up to god our little acts of suffering our little acts of fasting and let us take up from him his love to share that with our brothers and sisters in our arms giving and thus aware of the glory of jesus on this day of transfiguration aware also of his mission scientific mission for us through the path of suffering and death let us to follow jesus thanking god for all the little crosses that he sends along our way and let us accept these crosses joyfully and walk in following the lord our master and savior who tells us today no good friday no easter sunday if there is no good friday there is no easter sunday if you want to be happy you must lose something you must lose something for god's glory for the salvation of our own souls may god may jesus our leader and master give us this courage to follow him however difficult our path may be through christ our lord amen